this is Dr. Janet Bruno and today I want to spend some time talking about cancer treatments. And very specifically I want to talk about some misconceptions about antioxidants in relation to cancer treatments. Now there are many doctors who now believe that quite a number of patients undergoing cancer treatment are fed erroneous advice. And this is a scary thing because when you're, you or a family member are amidst a cancer diagnosis and cancer treatment, you really want and need to have the correct information. So some of the recommended treatments are actually painful, yet the research doesn't really support a reliable benefit. Then there's a lot of wrong advice making the circles among cancer patients regarding specific diets and the effect on their current cancer treatments. Now it can be very, very confusing. If you are amidst this or a family member, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now one of the very common myths is the recommendation to avoid consuming antioxidant supplements or foods rich in antioxidants while undergoing chemo therapy as, and radiation treatment. Now this is specifically what I want to address. In, 19, in, excuse me, in 2007, a study was released where researchers evaluated articles and scientific studies that involved nearly 9,000 cancer patients in order to verify this alleged interference of nutrients and antioxidants with the effectiveness of radiation and chemotherapy. Now the span of time covered was from 1965 to 2003. So this is a very significant study. And the resulting data showed that there was no interference at all. In fact, on the contrary. The nutrients, the antioxidants, actually increased the effectiveness of the chemo and radiation while simultaneously protecting normal tissues from the damage and reduced side effects of the chemo and radiation. These are two very significant wins. And there were even some studies which showed an increased rate of survival for patients who took non-prescription antioxidants and nutrition concurrently with their cancer treatment. So with getting the treatment, they took the antioxidant supplements and, and antioxidants rich foods. So this is very strong. Again, it's over nearly 9,000 cancer patients over a long period of time. Very clearly supports the use of antioxidants, specifically if you are undergoing chemotherapy or radiation therapy. And this same study actually also debunked several prevailing misconceptions. And one, one perfect example comes from Sloan Kettering, Memorial Sloan Kettering, a big cancer hospital. And a particular physician there, Dr. Larry Norton is his name, he has seen the beneficial effects of chemo on breast cancer. He found that those were reduced by people who took large doses of vitamin C. So that's very significant. And he also found in, in doing his workings that there's a specific uh, cancer drug called methotrexate. And the effectiveness of that drug was actually lessened or decreased by folic acid, which is very commonly in food and supplements. So it, it's very important to understand the impact of diet is very real. This is not a, a myth, it's very real. So after two years of um, doing the study, they actually released the study and people could take away from this. And many scientists reviewed the studies and there were some pretty significant takeaways. The first one was that the research was done on mice and not humans, which is difficult to make an exact correlation. And secondly, the author of the study admitted that taking large doses of vitamin C could interfere with the effects of chemotherapy and even radiation in humans. So even though there's actually a very significant flaw in the direct value of this research, even though that existed, the American Cancer Society immediately adopted a stance against supplements based on this one study without reviewing the evidence. So it, I do want to make this clear to you. It, it, it is by no means extremely clear. This one study that was had some very significant flaws, it was not done on humans, it did declare that there can be some negative impact with food and, and supplements in particular. But yet, the takeaway is it was not on humans. Previous studies, which are very significant, the 9,000 people, 
over a long period of time showed extremely clearly that specifically foods that are rich in antioxidants and or antioxidant supplements were extremely helpful. So the bottom line here is really that there are many standard operating procedures and practices which are based on little or non-existent evidence. I really want you to understand that. Medicine is a wonderful field. I am a physician, as you know, but I also have to be very truthful. There are certain things that are declared and it's, it's not based on enough solid evidence in this example I'm sharing with you right now, particularly in the world of nutrition, where physicians tend to not be very well educated on. That is true. So the problem is that current and more systematic research is beginning to show that many of the practices are actually not benign, and they can actually be causing harm to patients. There are some potentially harmful practices that are routinely recommended to this day. For example, more women are getting hysterectomy that probably need to. More women are getting an automatic episiotomy that, that doesn't absolutely necessarily need to happen. There's a lot of quote-unquote off-label drug uses. So physicians are using this drug to treat this one thing that may not be FDA approved. And then certainly there's the advice to completely avoid sun exposure. There's so much fear about skin cancer that we have a population of people that are extremely deficient in vitamin D, which has been shown to increase your risk of heart disease. There's a lot of information out there, and I just really think that's why I'm doing these things. I really think you deserve to hear the straight stuff, and it can be very confusing out there. So. Consequently, really, in today's broken healthcare system, it really becomes necessary for you, the patient, to do your own diligence. There's a lot of authoritative information online. I do hope you come to me with some questions because this research that you do, along with quizzing your doctors and other experts about the matter, are really important and critical steps to ensure that only the best healthcare is delivered to you. Now, this was a lot of information. I really hope you found it useful and stimulating. This is Dr. Jana Bruno wishing you a happy and a healthy day.